Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. LeBron James gave his Mount Rushmore of basketball within the last two days. And uh, his Mount Rushmore includes the best I've ever seen play, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Oscar Robertson. Now let me just say that in my opinion, no list of the top five or four players or even three players in NBA history can be considered accurate, at least not in my eyes, if that list does not include arguably the league's best player ever, Wilt Chamberlain. Now I know times have changed. Throw out the 100 point game. Throw out the 50 points per game in an NBA season scoring record. Right, you can even try to overlook the fact that no one in NBA history, not even Bill Russell, averaged as many rebounds a game as Will Chamberlain. Throw that out. All you need to know about Will Chamberlain to establish the fact that he definitely belongs on any short list of the best players in NBA history is that in 1967 to 68 during that NBA season with guys like Big O in the league Wilt Chamberlain from the center position led the league in assists Chamberlain is the last center to lead the NBA in assists. And understand you had some tremendous talents at the guard position playing that year, including Oscar Robertson. You know, as we talk about triple doubles, and understand triple doubles are a bit interesting, because it wasn't until the Magic Johnson era that we started openly talking about triple doubles. Right? So statisticians had to go back in NBA history to see who got triple doubles in the past. Just know that on February the 2nd, 1968, an argument can be made that Will Chamberlain put together the best triple double in history because Will Chamberlain that day didn't just get 10 of assists, rebounds, and points. Understand on that date, Will Chamberlain put together a triple 20. 20 points, 20 rebounds, and 20 assists. And again, you know, this is an era right now where you have big men who can't even put together four assists in a game. And here you have Wilt Chamberlain, the dominant scorer of his era, also being one of history's absolute best passing big men. And of course, if you want to get into things like minutes played, where Wilt led the league several times, block shots, where Wilt was absolutely right at the top of the line with guys like Bill Russell. <clears throat> Wilt, quite frankly, has few peers. I was stunned when I heard LeBron's list because I was waiting to hear Wilt's name. I simply don't know how you can have a short list without having Will Chamberlain on it. Understand too, 
as we talk about great teams, right, in NBA history, right, the 83 Philadelphia 76ers, <clears throat> uh, Jordan's Bulls, understand that Will Chamberlain was on two of the greatest teams ever in NBA history. The 1967 Philadelphia 76ers are widely considered as one of the league's most dominant teams in its history. And let's remember that Wilt then got traded, shows up with the Los Angeles Lakers. They then go on to win something like 33 games in a row. You remember them, the 72 Lakers. Right, Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, the record streak, the overall dominance, the championship. Right, think about it. One player, two different teams. These two teams are among the best, not just in the history of those franchises, but in the history of the league. Right? Let's go further. Another guy who I think has to be put on the list is Bill Russell. Understand, Russell is such a trailblazer in the sport. Right? Forget the five MVPs. I'm just judging him as a player. We'll forget that he's the first African-American coach in NBA history. He was a player coach in the late 60s, right? If you're a young guy watching this video, I hope you research this superstar, right? Just understand that when Bill Russell came along, you didn't have shot blocking like this. This is a different dynamic that Russell brings into the game, right? Understand that Russell's college coach, Phil Wolpert, was so shocked by Russell's shot blocking, he didn't know what to do with it, right? At one point, he says to Russell, hey, this is too disruptive, right? Russell, by the way, didn't just block shots. He blocked them to teammates. Right, this is literally a different level. This is a different dynamic. Right, Bill Russell, an argument can be made, is the best defender in NBA history. Right, I know the Jordan people are saying, whoa, whoa, slow your roll, Rich, slow your roll. Right, but my point to you is understand when you're talking about great defense, you're talking about Bill Russell, who has more rings than fingers, right? 11 rings, some legendary games against Wilt Chamberlain. He's the anchor of the 1960s most dominant team. His last game was the deciding game of an NBA championship, which, of course, he won. He's the ultimate winner, as Magic Johnson calls him. He's the ultimate competitor. Understand, this guy was one of the dominant guys during his college career, right? He wins Olympic gold, then he immediately, upon joining the Celtics, averages something like 19 boards a game and wins a championship his first year. Understand, this is a guy who only missed winning a championship twice in his career. Right? One of the times they got beaten out, it was by the 67 Sixers, one of history's best teams. Now, I don't say this lightly, and keep in mind too, for those who say Russell couldn't score, Russell averaged more than 15 points a game, right? And that, of course, goes with Russell's 22 and a half rebounds a game, right? 
LeBron put Larry Bird on his list. Now, I was a child in the 1980s. Right? I followed the Celtics. I remember watching. I mean, I was physically watching on TV, not at the event, as a kid, Magic against Bird in the NCAA championship game. I saw Larry Bird's entire career. No doubt Larry's a great player. Right? Larry averaged 10 boards a game. But a contemporary, Charles Barkley, once said that as long as Larry Bird is in this league, I won't be the worst defensive player. Larry defensively wasn't that great. Bill Russell was. With regard to LeBron's list, I would say it's malpractice to put Larry in over Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell. One man's opinion, I'm dying to hear yours. Let me go further. Right? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I have no idea how a six-time MVP, you heard me right, could somehow be overlooked. Right now, you know I like offense and defense. Right? I, You know, offense alone is not it. You can't be just a gunner and somehow make it onto, in my opinion, a short list of the best players in NBA history. Now, understand Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and this goes out to all the fantasy people out there. We know Kareem had the game's most unstoppable shot. The sky hook was simply unstoppable. It's unguardable. Right? Um, you could be Will Chamberlain. You'd have no shot of blocking the sky hook. Kareem leveraged his height, was throwing a hook from here. And don't kid yourself. If you look at the films, you'll see... He could throw that hook up from 15 feet in. It's practically a jump shot. Right? What you need to know. As you're looking at centers masquerading as shot blockers who are averaging 1.5 blocks a game. Is that Kareem, a dominant scorer from his era. Understand, <laughs> Kareem for his career averages more than 24 points a game. Just know that Kareem had seven years, seven, where he averaged at least three blocks a game. Right? This guy, great rebounder, great shot blocker, great scorer, more MVPs than Bill Russell. Right? Understand for those of you watching this video in my age range, right? If you watch basketball in the 70s and 80s, if you remember Lloyd Free before he became World Be Free, if you remember George the Iceman Gervin's range, then you have to be astonished that perhaps the dominant player of the era, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, somehow is off Mount Rushmore. Right now, I don't say this lightly. And I'll agree that there aren't a lot of spaces. LeBron named four names. And I'll agree it's hard to cut down a list to four. I'll also agree that basketball is position specific. Right? In other words, it's a bit unfair to point guards like Oscar Robertson, who you wouldn't expect to get a lot of block shots, to be talking about block shots as a criteria here to make the list. Right? Just know, though, that as you look back on NBA history, if you had to come up with a list of, let's say, five guys, 
In my opinion, some of the spots are already taken. You know, I think if we were to ask ourselves who are the best players ever in the history of the NBA, two names leap out to me out the gate. One's Jordan. The other's Wilt. Right? Those two seats are taken. Russell with 11 rings, I think his seat is taken. Right? In my opinion, we can fight it out. Magic, spectacular. Big O, spectacular. Kareem, spectacular. We can fight it out on the remaining seat. Right? LeBron is getting there. But let me just point out, LeBron's not there yet. LeBron James himself knows that he's never put together a year like the year where Big O averaged a triple-double. Let me also say this. I was uh, at my favorite bar the other day. I was talking to a bartender who ironically is now a sportscaster in Salinas, California. Nick, I'm giving you a plug here. And we were arguing over who was better, LeBron or Michael Jordan. Now let me just say, I think LeBron's a spectacular player. He's easily one of the best players I've ever seen. Right? But again, if you're of a certain age, if you watch basketball in the late 80s and 90s, I believe you know in your heart there's no comparison. As great as LeBron is, he's not the athlete that Michael Jordan was. Right? Jordan had a certain speed dynamic that LeBron doesn't have. LeBron's more straight line. Jordan was more fluid. Compared to LeBron, Jordan's Fred Astaire. Let me also say, too, that in terms of leadership, you know, Jordan just demanded excellence. You know, at the time, I had no doubt that Dennis Rodman, who was a flake back then, would show up and be completely focused on Jordan's bulls. You know guys who are leaders. There's no question about it. You understood when Jordan was on the court, he was alpha. Had Jordan joined the Miami Heat, and I know I'm going to say it's controversial, and had there been a very good player there, not an all-time great, but a very good player there, like Dwayne Wade, there'd be no question that it was Jordan's team. Such was the personality. Understand too, I know LeBron wants to be Defensive Player of the Year this year, right? There's no comparison between Jordan's level of defense and LeBron's level of defense. None. Let me just say, Jordan really is a Babe Ruth figure. That's what Jerry West used to call him. Understand, we took Jordan for granted. His brilliance was so obvious to us back then in his prime that Jordan once had a triple-double in an all-star game and didn't win the MVP. Right before Jordan retired the first time, Jordan in an NBA Finals in which he was doing spectacular stuff like winning a game on the last drive and stuff was averaging more than 40 points a game. And I'm just here to tell you that at the time we just thought, oh, that's Jordan. Right? LeBron James is a great player. He's not Michael Jordan. Let me also say, too, Magic's a game changer. He's one of the best passers I have ever seen. I believe it takes a certain level of leadership to be on a team with Bob McAdoo. 
with James Worthy, first pick of the draft. Understand what the Lakers had then. With Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. With Michael Thompson, who was first pick of the draft. With Michael Cooper, who was sixth man of the year. Right Later with Byron Scott. And here was young Magic Johnson. And I'm telling you, in his early 20s, when you watched what they called Showtime, when the Lakers took the floor, even with Kareem and Worthy, you knew who the leader of that team was. Right? Game recognizes game. Great players recognize great players. Right? And you also understood something else with Magic. Nobody understands this more than the Philadelphia 76er franchise. As good as Magic was as a point guard, and understand, we're talking about phenomenal passing. I'll agree, LeBron passes like Magic. Jason Kidd. Those three guys really are in a league of their own, in my opinion, in terms of passing ability. But you understood that if Magic Johnson needed to play power forward or center, as he did in the NBA Finals, that he could seamlessly do it. Right? So, I'll just put it to you this way. I'll agree the spots are scarce. But in terms of my top five, Wilt, if this were top three, Wilt, Wilt would be on my top three. Right? Wilt, Russell, Jordan, unquestioned. After that, it gets a little bit hazy. Right? Um, Kareem and Oscar, ooh, that sounds about right. If someone wants to argue with me and put magic in there, all right, I'll go do that. Let's just say, though, LeBron, I need to see more jewelry before you're on this list. Right? To the Larry Bird crowd, I'll just say, you know, I'm going to have to hear a good argument as to why I should overlook defense. I'm not here to say Magic was that great defensively. But just look at Magic Steals. Okay? Before you write your comments back. All right. I've got to run. Thanks for stopping by.